my name is Natalie Baberta, and currently I'm exhibiting my work at the Cary Institute for Global Good in Rensselaerville, New York. Unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond everyone's control, the center is closed and you wouldn't be able to come and see it in person right now. Hopefully when we open back up, you might have a chance to do that. In the meantime, I'm going to give you a little introduction to the work and you'll get to see examples of the different things I do. Right now, I'm showing two different series of work. I'm a conceptual artist, so generally the ideas drive the medium. I don't work just in oils or just in pastels. I tend to use what will fit my message. So the work that you see right next to me is a whole series called the machine drawings. And the machine drawings are all com coming from the same kind of sense of angst uh, about world issues that I have no control over. Um, the things that keep you up at night trying to figure out how to fix. So one of the things I started thinking about was how technology could be used to solve a lot of these issues if the right person came up with the right idea and could put it into action. I don't have the technical skills to do that, but I'm hoping to inspire other people to. So for instance, the one that you see right here is the environmental empathy machine. And that came about because of the deregulations that are happening, that are put in place to protect our parks and wetlands, um, the destruction I'm seeing of habitat all over the world, um, climate change obviously brings that to the forefront, but it's something I've been concerned about for quite a while. So the concept behind this was for people to get back to understanding how important it is emotionally, physically, spiritually to be connected back to the earth, back to what we need to survive, what everybody needs to survive. Um, the idea of stewardship instead of just use. So that's where this particular machine comes from. The one next to it over here is very different in that that's a personal machine. So once in a while my ideas aren't from the world, they're actually coming from a personal space. And this one is when you're struggling with a personal relationship, especially familial. And you know you say the things you think you shouldn't and you wish you could take it all back. <laughs> so in this one, what I'm looking for is a personal angst machine, but what I'm looking for at the end is just a little bit of peace out of things. So sometimes they're very global in context, like the one next to it, which is the refugee embracing machine. Um, obviously, you know, we have a problem with what to do with refugees and keep our part in these. Um, not just think about it from a political standpoint, but a humane standpoint. And so there are different modes of transportation within here, um, and it, it goes back to part of remembering we're all refugees in one way or another. And then there's a series that keeps going both ways for different things like the gun stun machine, which I'm sure you can understand what that's about. Um, and a lot of these are done very meticulously, no mistakes allowed, straight with marker, micron specifically, because they're very fine point and they don't bleed. But if I make a mistake, I'm done. This is the other set of pieces that I have in this exhibit. So on this side, you see something that's very different. It doesn't come from that serious, angsty place. This is actually a place of peace and joy. So these are impressions from different beaches that I've been to. I absolutely adore the ocean. I've been from Florida down to Maine, and I spend my time walking, looking a lot down. I love the textures, the colors, the patterns, even the water it makes. I collect broken things a lot. And I use them not only to look for inspiration and ideas and color, but I actually embed them into the work in this series, or I'll use them to press and create impressions. So this series is done with plaster, actually, and then layers and layers of acrylic. It has different things embedded in it. The one next to me right here is actually based on Siesta Key. So if you've ever been there, it's very commercial in the area that you go through, and so there's lots of bright colors, very tropical looking. Um, and then these great shells that you find all through there that are just kind of worn down, and I love the historical look of them. So they're very layered, and they come from that piece, that memory later that I want to bring home and remember what that ocean was like. And this kind of beach is very different. When you go up to the coast of Maine, you have rocks and very dark colors. Um, all that has inspired a very different look. Um, I like the washed clean look of sand, too, so some of the pieces will be very smooth with just little hints of things in them. Uh, different times of day, storms, things like that also affect the colors that I use a lot. 
And the reason I went with the plaster was because I was kind of marrying two different um, methods. One was a method of acrylics that I learned where you layer, 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 wipe off, layer, wipe off, and reveal textures. And the other part was actually from encaustics, which is usually painting with wax. But I learned how to make a base out of plaster to create these textures and, and just put those two together instead. So it's kind of a unique use of the materials. Um, these tend to give me piece in one way that the other pieces don't. With these, I feel like I'm finished at the end. I can look at them and have a good feeling. The others give me hope. So I'm kind of hoping that someone will become inspired and help things out in that way by having a spark kind of light under their psyche and make them come alive and make something that will change the world. So I hope you enjoy this. And if you'd like to see more work, I have a website, www.babarkastudios.com. Boberka is B-O-B-U-R-K-A. Come by the Kerry Institute when you get a chance. I hope you're staying safe. Take care.